Just a quick disclaimer before we proceed. Uh, nor myself, this channel, or our session models take any responsibility for any damage to the circuitry or the fine detailing of the model while doing the installation of the DCC chips. Watching is watching this video is at viewer's discretion. Hi folks, Artie here. Gonna do an installation of a DCC chip into the Ocision 44 class, uh, which is DC model. It did not come with the chip. Now, I have referred to the uh, operator's manual that is on Ocision website. Um, I'm going to be installing a non-sound ESU uh, decoder in it. It's a 21 pin. Now there are a few things that need to be done to the circuit board. That too is actually explained in detail in the Ossessions manual. But I'm going to do a quick demonstration here with this model on how to do it. So the first thing we're going to do is you take it out of the box. Um, I'll of course take it off camera now. Just be aware, uh, there is a lot of fine details in this engine. Get yourself a suitable cradle, which won't damage the fine detail on the model itself. So I'm going to go ahead and take it out of the box and give it a test run on the DC and I'll come back to the camera. So here's the model out of the box. Uh, for those who are not familiar with the 44 class, uh, it is important to note uh, the number one end and number two end, and this is going to come for the wiring swap later on for the decoder. Um, this here with the bonnet on it or the hood, that's the number one end, and that's number two end. There are switches underneath that you operate in DC mode that can individually turn on and off the headlights, marker lights, and the number four lights. Now, to remove the chassis, the body apart, I'll just make to the point, we need to remove a couple of boxes from the number one end and number two end and gently pry it apart. So, I'm going to pull this apart and I'm going to show you guys how to swap it all out. Be back soon. Okay, so I'm going to need to pull the body apart off the chassis. Um, what I did was I used some toothpicks and a bit of uh, plastic card or, or business card. There's two lugs on each side, as you can see here that also assists and holds the body in place. So you need to put um, either a thin toothpick or a business card slide up the side there to pry the clip or the shell away from that clip and the body will slide out. So now there are wires that are hooked up to the shell itself and when we pull apart we're just going to be gentle with it Don't pull too far away because we don't want to disturb the wiring too much okay so that's 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 how it looks in the circuit board and now we're going to show you guys what to do if you wish With this model being in DC mode, uh, all your lighting plugs that you have in place at the moment is actually plugged into DC. Now, according to the instruction, 
um, if you don't want individual function on your decoders or your, uh, decoder doesn't um, 41 pin doesn't have auxiliary ports in it you can leave the plugs as they are you can leave these wires as they are even in DCC mode the only thing is leaving in this mode you won't have individual lighting functions such as number board, board light um, the marker lights and headlights if you're going to install a decoder and want individual functions then you've got to swap it over from that port and into this port here uh, that's your dummy chip uh, for DC mode now I strongly recommend you keep that um, and retain it in your box just in case you decide you want to change the decoder or you don't want to run in DCC mode anymore you want a DC only you got the jumper plug with you so do not discard this so we're going to go ahead and remove the, uh, the jumper and I will um, I will change these plugs over so I'll be back soon okay so I'm going by what Ossetians recommended which is the ESU lock 5 um, now what they are referring to is the NEM660 uh, it's supposed to be compatible with the other ESU factory installed uh, decoders I've already got two of these 44 classes of sand decoders and I've been told that this is actually will work in conjunction with that you can however uh, choose your own decoder but refer to the manual for the suitable decoders to suit the 44 class so I'm gonna go ahead and install the decoder okay how to install a 21 pin it's quite easy as you see you got all your twin uh, pins there you got 21 pins in line and then you got one pin missing now on your circuit board it's on your on your uh, 21 pin you can see that there is a blank spot there let me give you a focus you've got the blank spot there that goes to where the pin is missing so we're going to go and put this in place now it is also it's also recommended that you uh, keep a record it is also recommended that you keep a record of when you bought your chip when you installed it in case you have any issues down the line um, and you can get warranty replacements if need be okay let's just do a quick recap um, then the decoder is installed now um, for your DCC function for individual lights you need to change the plugs over from DC to DCC mode which is simple of pulling the plug out from one and putting it into the other just make sure you've got your cab orientation still the same way um, same with the front and you've got change the two wires here aside don't worry about these other ones they're speaker for the speaker for sound um, for the sound chip that's for something down the line in another video when I do a sound installation now you don't have to change these plugs over the light function and number board lights and marker lights will still work but only as a lighting function 
on off you can individually switch the lights off with let me just turn it over um, here with individual switches that are underneath the locomotive okay so now we're just going to put them all back together and program it and get it to run Again, just a quick disclaimer, uh, myself and including our session, uh, we do not take responsibility for any damage caused to the detail of the locomotive while you perform this task. There is a lot of fine detail in the, on these models and they may and will break. Uh, just doing this installation, I've I've had three items that broke off. As you see there, I'll have to put them back in a later date. And the sandy pipe also came off. So it will happen, no matter how delicate or how gentle you are with the model, it will happen. Okay, I'm going to take it up for a test run. Um, now, what I've actually done with those jumpers I've actually put them back into DC mode so I can actually demonstrate uh, how they still will work if you don't swap them over uh, I've actually found that in the mode that it's in now it will suit me down to the ground it's simple um, we we'll take it to the track and I'll give you the demonstration Okay, well the light function is simple. Um, headlight on and off. They work directionally, forward and reverse. Uh, number board and front clear marker lights and rear marker lights. It's uh, function one, on and off. Now, the marker lights will work with function 2, the red marker lights. You have to have the function 1 turned off for that to work. As such. Now, if you want to turn off the lights individually so they do not come on, as I showed before, there is the switches underneath the locomotive. You can turn them into the position that you want, especially when you're multi-heading. They're running with a consist. So let's give it a run and you'll see it is that will run just nicely. everybody out um, until the next installation have fun stay safe